Well, now, do this next time you visit your bank. And guess what? You're going to thank me later. I dare promise you by the end of this video, I'm going to leave in a station and be like, what? I didn't know that. Anyway, the point is this. You know, banks, they are a great place where we keep our money because obviously we can't keep our money under the mattresses and what have you. But did you know also the bank, that money that you take to them, it's actually a liability and they're supposed to use it to invest so that they can be able to run all the expenses. And, and by the way, how exactly can you be the smartest one as far as you and bank are put in one place? All right? So that's what exactly I'm going to share with you. And by the way, if you're watching me for the first time, hey, this is good Joseph speaking and my content is all about finances, about money, how can we invest, how can we grow ourselves and all those kind of things. And literally things that were hidden from you when you were growing up. And by the way, guess what? I do upload a video each and every day. So if you don't want to miss my good videos, make sure that you hit that subscription button. That's why I always tell you, make sure that you subscribe, all right? That's the importance. You never miss any good video of mine. Like the video and also comment down below. Let's get into the business now. This is what you're supposed to understand. See, bank is simply where we keep our money. And next time you visit your bank, these are the things that you're supposed to go and ask and inquire. But before I say anything, you know what? If you're watching this from Kenya, <clears throat> less than a week ago, I think it is CAC, yeah, I think it's Communication Authority or something of sort. Hey, they actually ordered all the big banks in Kenya to pay back the money that was there in the hidden charges. You know, these big banks, are some of the hidden charges that they'll never tell you when you're opening a bank account. If you show up to open a bank account, they welcome you. Oh, hi, what's your name? Oh, you'd like to open a bank account? Oh, amazing. Do this and this and this and this. Because in anything that they do, and there is no problem. We are here. We are all selfish. The banks are selfish. We are selfish. Everyone is selfish. But you need to be smart. So, whatever they welcome you there to open a bank account, they are so nice. They are so good. It's like when you're taking a loan, they even can give you a coffee and some few snacks out there. <clears throat> but that's some of the information they never tell you. And that's why when you're opening a bank account, they kind of give you like four or five things concurrently. Hey, you can apply for an ATM, you can open for a mobile banking transfer if you're watching from Kenya and all those kind of things, okay? So if you're naive, you don't ask, you know, specific question. What are the charges hidden in terms of maybe maintaining my account? Because I hear some people complaining about, hey, guess what? I checked my balance and it's a little bit low. I didn't know exactly what is going on. Do we have some other charges and such kind of a thing? So when you subject them to them telling you the truth, and if they do not, then you can actually even take a legal action. For example, they were ordered by that body or in Kenya to actually pay back those guys, those hidden charges that they do not disclose. All right. For example, I had a client from somewhere and uh, they never disclosed some of the information when the guy requested the money to be credited in his investment. What they did, they sold the investment on their behalf and then they made money out of that. And that is bad. So one thing that you're supposed to understand is this. Okay. The moment you visit your bank, inquire on those these things. Okay. Number one, inquire the type of account that you hold, the type of account that you have, okay, the type of account that you have. Okay, is it just a, an account where money comes in, gets out, and is that account subjected to any charges? Maybe say like maintenance or something of sort, and if they are there, then what are the, these charges and how much are the charges? Because some of these hidden charges actually they make a lot of money for the banks, okay? So inquire the type of an account that you hold. Because some of you show up to a bank with your ID and whatever, you open a bank account and then you forget about it. Don't even know the identity of your account. Know the identity of your account. Because we have some other better accounts that you can have in place of what you have. But because you didn't ask the type of an account that you have, then you might be in a problem. And I'd be like, okay, fine, Joseph, what can I do? Because I already have an account. Fine, that's what I'm telling you. When you visit next, inquire on this information. So once you inquire, and then get to inquire how many other types of account can I have? You can always do the bank transfer and if it's within the bank and account transfer, you can actually put some money out there. Sometimes I tell people, well, though it is not a recommended option and I do not advise you to do it and never do it, something called the fixed account. There's something that the banks will tell you called the fixed account. When they tell you you can actually fix your money somewhere, <clears throat> never take this action. Never take that advice. Because what they give you there, for example, they tell you, hey, you're going to give you something like 6.5%. 6.5%, this money, it's pre-tax, or this percentage is pre-tax. If you subject this money to pre-tax, maybe it goes back to 4.5%. All right? And guess what happens? You fix your money in a period of one year in a fixed account. <clears throat> and then what happens? They take that money. For example, I'm going to give you a very real example. Let's say you fix your million bob. Let's even talk a very simple amount of money, like 100k. Let's say you fix this amount of money in a period of one year. <clears throat> All right. And then they tell you, we're going to give you 6.5%. Then they take this money because you are fixed with them. It's an agreement of, hey, guess what? You can't withdraw your money before that time elapses. Now they take that money. Then guess what happens? They put that money in something like a treasury bill. They put that money in a T-bill. 
for example, because T-bill actually gives you that, uh, you sort of have a liquidity, you know, liquidity, in, you know, you, you still have the money sort of like, okay, they put that money in a period of one year, okay, and the T-bill right now as you speak is around 16.8% or 16.9%, whichever the case. Now you see, <clears throat> who is being the fool here? They take that money, 16%, they put it in a T-bill, they get the 16%, so pre-tax, that is pre-tax, post-tax, maybe give it at 14.8%, 14.8%, and then they deduct your 6.5%, then they remain like 8.3%. Like, uh, now, guess what happens? <laughs> Whoa, guess what happens? Your money has already been subjected to interest. Now they cannot subject to the interest. Now they get their clean 8.3%. Now you get your 4.5%. Now between the two, who is the fool? Come on. So next time when you go, don't buy the idea of fixed account. So what you do, you inquire or if you have to invest with them, if you are, you are great friends, and I'm saying don't hate them. They are great people. Personally, I love banks. Obviously, my money is there. It's not, I don't have it back at home, okay? So, But the point is this. You have to put always your mouth where your money is. So instead of getting the fixed account and you want to invest with the same bank because maybe it's a great bank, then you can inquire. Do you have something like an MMF? I want to go the MMF way. <clears throat> Why? Because MMF, you can access your money anytime you want. And MMF percentage, as we speak in Kenya, we are talking about the ups of 12%. You can get up to 12% all the way to 15%. So in between 12% and 15% is way bigger than the 6.5% that they are asking. And this is the question I want you to go ahead and ask from that specific place. Go and ask them. Um, <clears throat> Do you have an MMF? If your bank is straight and okay and means good for you, and of which I highly doubt, if you ask, ask them about the MMF uh, opening account, before they tell you yes or no, and this is how you can open it, they'll give you a lot of stories after that. They'll tell you, hey, guess what? Um, let's, let's say, hey, guess what, Joseph? Don't go with the MMF. Maybe perhaps, hey, instead of this, how about you give us your money and then you fix our money or you can put our money in a certain account and then we can use the money. We can be, uh, you know, sort of a partnership. It's like it's like you lend the bank your money for them to let it out. And in Kenya, the percentage now is going all the way up to 21%. Some some banks even up to 26%. This is the amount of money that you're getting from that money that you're giving them, okay? <clears throat> now, they tell you, guess what, Joseph, okay? Fine, instead of putting your money in an MFF, how about you give us your money in a certain period of time, and then we can issue it out as loans and what have you, and we can give you a clean 8%. At clean 8%. But you see them, they are getting that at 21%. Okay, fine. I, I understand there is a aspect of them taking the risk and all those kind of things. But the difference here, come on, we are all taking the risk. It's my money, it's your money. You, you, get, you get what I'm saying? I mean, l l just give me a little bit of a friendly kind of a, a percentage. But, but I understand, you know, this is an equal uh, discussion. It's like when Kenya dis uh, uh, gets into a deal with China. Those are, we are only 50, 50 million, China is over 1 billion. And I usually ask myself, what kind of a deal can you have with such kind of, kind of a country? Always the deal that will break it beyond your favor because of the population. But if Kenya and Tanzania goes to an agreement, we are 50-50 something of sort in terms of population. We actually kind of face the same challenges the similar problems and all those kind of things. But anyway, I'm not here to talk about the politics, but I'm asking myself, if, if you can get a little bit of a friendly percentage, that would be far much better. So next time you visit your bank, ask, hey, do you have an MMF? Yes. And if your bank is a PLC, never forget this. If your bank is a PLC, public listed company, if your bank is under the Nairobi Securities Exchange, okay, I'm referring to Kenyans, okay? Go check your, your country, what is it called? If you're South Africa, I think it's called JSC, Johannesburg is Securities Exchange or something of sort. If you're in Egypt, they have the years. If you, whatever the country, they do have the. If you're in New, 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 US, it's called NSE, New York Securities Exchange or something of sort. So if your bank is a PLC, come on, consider buying shares. If you trust it to keep your money, then why don't you trust it to, to do what? Go ahead and do what? Buy shares for that given company. And always people ask me, Joseph, what are some of the best companies that you can actually buy shares for or from? Don't even think hard. Think about the things that you do every day. Don't even think about the people. Think about the things that you do every day. Oh, we eat cereals a lot. Consider some companies that deal with cereals. For example, in Kenya, I don't want to mention the company. For example, I ask yourself, okay, fine. I use some tool Colgate for brushing uh, uh, some, um, uh, what do we call it? Uh, I did mention the name, but that was not the intention. I like uh, that thing that you shouldn't brush your mouth or something. Th those normal things that you do, you fuel your car, buy shares about those companies that you, 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 you know, they deal with... Uh, 
at the, the oil and something of sort. The normal thing that go ahead here and there, you know, uh, some of the body parts, some of the electronics, those things that usually do each and every day. You buy, you, you invest on those areas that surrounds you. The things that you know, common human beings, uh, we, have, uh, we actually hygiene things and all those kind of things. Those are the areas where you buy shares, okay? The real estate, the properties and something of sort. That is where, where most of the people channel their money. That's where you buy your shares from, okay? So if your bank is a PLC, consider buying shares of that given bank. Okay, but obviously when I say buy shares, I don't mean like you entirely buy shares for just this single account or for always or other company, always focus on diversifying. Okay, it, it, it is actually good. If, if perhaps maybe you take a lot of loans from that given a, 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 a bank, there was a time here I, I showed you how you can actually acquire a loan all the way to uh, interest free. Okay, so make sure that at least you buy shares of that given uh, bank, ask them whether they are PLC and maybe perhaps they may not tell you this, but it's you to find out whether they are listed under the PLC or their PLC company. Ask them whether they have an MMF and which type of they have and what are their percentages of now. And by the way, what other accounts do you offer and how can I go ahead and invest in those accounts? What do I start to gain? What is the minimum amount of money and all those kind of things. So by the way, and again, you kind of ask themselves things like I was to give you, hey, can I actually invest on bonds and take a loan against my bond and be able to take that loan and invest in maybe say in a real estate whereby you're going to be having a win-win. You're able to, the bond is helping you to pay back the loan and at the same time you have a real estate somewhere that you're developing or maybe you're actualizing owning a home. You can go check that older video of mine so that at least when it comes, the game of finance you really need to be a good negotiator. But again, don't go there again with a full selfishness that whereby you don't even consider them. Also understand they are there to make money. Don't like appraise them to the corner to a point where but it's all about you. No, if you argue that way, you're not an investor. You're not a real business person. What you do is that bring them to a point whereby they're also making something out of you and you're also making something out of you. Let it be a symbiotic kind of a relationship where it's, you have a mutual benefit, the two of you, rather than having a situation where but it's only you who are milking you, benefiting a lot from you. You're doing nothing about it and such kind of things. And by the way, this is a deal. This is a game that most of the wealthy people, they know. And that's why you find they have this skill of using the loans, your money to build themselves and you, you are there and you're thinking about how you can grow yourself, yet people are using your money to grow themselves and you, you are doing nothing about it. So the point is this, at all the time, think on what you can be able to do with your bank. So next time you visit them, come on, promise me that you're going to ask real questions and when you ask these real questions, that's the time now you make a difference in your life as far as the world of finance is concerned. And guess what guys, that marks the end of my video, but let me just recap. Ask whether they have an MMF. Check out whether they are PLC, meaning that they are public listed company, all right? Ask whether that they have other better alternative in terms of the account that you can keep your money in place of what you have. Again, ask the identity of the account that you own with them or you have opened with them. Or, and ask whether there are other charges that are hidden out there so that at least the information that you get, you can bank on it. Hey, you know what? Sometimes you can be forced to take a legal action. Guess what? You told me there are no other charges, but now I'm realizing that there are other deductions from my account. What exactly is going on? Can you explain this? And all those kind of things, okay? Because some of the things things that you do not even ask and, and, and another thing you, you people you should ask you get approached by banks and they tell you hey guess what we have a credit card that we can give you and they can give you a purchasing power get that credit card if you know it's necessary for you don't just get it by virtue of you qualifying it I repeat, some of the you guys are being called by your banks and are telling you, hey, you can get a credit card, you can have this credit card, you can be given a purchasing power of over 100k or something of sort. Be very careful. Just because you qualify does not qualify you to taking it. So you must have two qualifications. Qualification number one is them telling you that you're qualified. Qualification number two, do I really need it or something of sort? Do I? And if I get that debt, how am I going to use it? And if maybe perhaps I was to survive on the credit, then now what do I intend to use with my money that could have placed that credit? You get what I saw. So don't just let them qualify you also qualify yourself if you qualify yourself you qualify them to qualify you that's how you do it that's the world of the finances and at all the time when you're going to these institutions eh, understand in the financial world everybody is there and they're there to make money it's an aggressive world and nobody's your friend whether they give you a smile sometimes it can be the judge's smile be smart and begin out there anyway this is good joseph speaking and by the way don't forget to hit that like button make sure that you subscribe and also comment down below and by the way if you'd like to get a conversation with me my number is always in the description of this specific video go get it out shoot me a call or text let's have a conversation for now so goodbye and see you there